So you want to convert your e-bike to all-wheel drive or dual motor. Here you go. All-wheel drive wired cruiser bike. Now it's time for the shameless plug right here. Front motor kit, citizenperformance.com. I sell those. That's what's on this bike. That's how we made it all-wheel drive. And I know a lot of you bought that kit for this specific bike because you've been emailing me saying, can you show us how you mounted everything? How are you going to hide the wires? How do you do it on the cruiser bike? Because normally I just black tape the wires to the underside of the frame. But on this bike, that's where your battery comes out on the bottom side of the frame. So you can't really black tape the wires right there. So this was my solution. This is how I did it. I'll start here at the back. So we got our controller mounted underneath the front of the rack here. Now the new wires, this is the prototype bike. I don't have the rear battery pack. So I had space there to put the controller. I would recommend you got these two bars that come down. I would mount the controller right to those bars. Get a piece of black ABS plastic mount it between the bars and then mount the controller right to that. I think I'd be a great spot for it because on the prototype, the, the rack is like shifted back and those bars are on more of an angle, but I had space there. So that's where I put my controller. Now to hide the wires, you've probably already seen them there, but I painted the wiring harness and the motor wire green. I found the closest green I could find and painted the wires green and then took these wire uh, mounting tabs, little clear, plastic tabs stuck into the frame and just routed the wires through there. So it comes right up the top of the frame. It looks uh, pretty clean from the, both sides, actually this side and also this side. You know, they don't really have wires running down the side of the bike at all. They go right down the top. They blend pretty good, I think. It's, uh, you know, I wanted to find some kind of creative way to do this to hide those wires. There's not really a way to route them through the frame. There's no hole for the wires to go in back here. You'd have to drill another hole in that box to feed the wires through. I don't know if there's enough room in the battery compartment to speed the wires through. So that's what I did. I painted the harness green from right here to or like right here. The wires are just green and then they're stuck on there with those wire routing tabs. So what do you think? I don't think it looks too bad, but I'm showing you this just to maybe feed your creativity, give you some ideas of how maybe you wanna do it. I could have maybe put the wires closer to the battery here, but this part of the frame, it's not flat. So I couldn't put those little plastic wire tabs on there. They just wouldn't stick right. So that's why we went right down the top of the frame like that. But there you go. That was my creative solution for how to hide the wires on the cruiser bike. And it's just those two wires to hide. You got the main line that comes up to your display and your throttle, and then the motor wire comes down to your front motor. I've got my battery pack just in this rear pack right here. The 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack. That's what comes with the kit and it weighs 10 pounds, almost exactly 10 pounds. So that's how much weight's on the rear rack. This baby is stable, zero wobble, zero. Does not wobble at all. I know you're gonna ask me that. I can't even physically force it to wobble. It won't. Now, is that because, you know, I've got weight on the rear end. You know, if you saw my video of testing, that seems to be what triggers a lot of it. But, you know, is it because the weight is in front of the rear axle? Is it because I have a Hellbender headset in there? Is it because the additional weight of the front motor and the front end? Is it a combination of all three? I don't know, but this thing is like a rock. But it's time we go out and ride it so I can show you what this thing does. I built this kit to do two things. Increase hill climb power, increase acceleration. Let's turn both displays on. There we go. Let's get both into pedal assist one so we've got active throttles twist throttle for the wired rear motor thumb throttle for the front motor kit use whichever one you want i i like it this way because then the front wheel is not accidentally engaging in a turn or anything it's you only get front motor whenever i hit that so let's go show you some acceleration here rear motor and front nothing to go 35 up that hill it's it adds a lot of strength so here's a wired motor rear takeoff pretty good i mean the wired bike is strong it is really strong i would suggest if you have this bike you get used to that power before you go add more to it but if you add in the front we just burn out and dig
Now it doesn't add any more top speed, but I mean the wired bike goes like 41. <laughs> you don't need any more speed. Let me show you how fast it gets up to top speed. Here we go. There's 32, 3, 4. 38, 39, 40. The top's out right about there, right about 40, 41. Plenty fast. Plenty fast. You'll notice I wasn't even holding the front motor button because the front motor tops out at like 32. So there's really no point holding it past that. You know, it's meant to just get you going. That pull, man, that pull. Woo! That's the, that's the beauty of the, the front motor, the acceleration thrill. It totally changes the bike. I'm not gonna do it in the turn. I'll wait till I make the turn, then we'll hit it. You never wanna do the front motor in a turn. Good brakes too on this thing. I love these Gemma brakes. They're a good upgrade from those Tektro E350s. Stop and go. This bike's great in the stop and go. You can hear the front motor kind of clawing. Let's see if we can do a rolling burnout at 10. Broke loose a little bit. So comfy. So comfy. This is one of my uh, favorites in the garage right now. I love the step through. I love the green. The green is so cool. <laughs> the lime. Lime green is like my favorite, man. But I want to show you this. Let me get out on a straight stretch here. Let's run it up to a little bit of speed. So there's. 35. I'm gonna hit the bars. I mean, I'm hitting them hard. You can't even like make this thing wobble. I got cars behind me, I gotta stop. So I don't know if it's the hellbender like self-correcting it or the weight of the wheel. I don't know what it is, but it, man, like you can't force this thing to wobble at all. You could, it was wobbling before. There you go, at 33 mile an hour, nothing. It like, it self-corrects. All right, car's behind me again. All right, well, there you go. What do you think? What do you think of the wire routing job? Give me another look at how I did this. Here you can see the wires just go straight up the frame with the little clips. And I actually kind of like having them external because if anything happens, you know, whatever I, short out a wiring harness or something i can replace it easily rather than trying to fish it through the frame but there you go i mean this thing kit can be added to pretty much any bike i just wanted to show it on this bike because it just <laughs> it's so much power so much fun but if you guys got a better idea for the wire routing let me know in the comments or email me i'd love to hear it love to hear new ideas and uh, let me throw the drone up in the air here we'll give you an acceleration all right let me show you a uh, full power takeoff here I do not have the slow start on, so we're gonna get a ton of wheel spin. Okay, three, two, one, go. Nice, love it, love it. You can dial the power down so it doesn't get so much wheel spin. That's probably the better way to ride it, but I like having the power on demand. <laughs> Oh. 
tires warm. There you go. Well, I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know about your uh, wire routing ideas. That's all for today.